What's up, everybody? Welcome to day 420, making Songbringer. Today I'm working on the flask quest. The flask is an item that refills your health. All of your health. It's the first item that finally does that. Um, there's always been cactuses you can eat, which refill one of your teeth. And make you invincible and reveal secrets and stuff like that but the flask actually refills all your health so if I take some damage here kill this kill myself almost and then drink a flask refills all your courage over a moment too so you can actually be taking a little bit of damage while you're gaining all that health back and um, and still like you can, you can gain one basically you can gain one more tooth actually out of it. What's up, salad dogs? What's up, pizza? Yo, what's up, you guys? It's good to see you. Happy day 420. I got it. Today's gonna be the flask. The flask quest. Oh, you like the music? Yeah, the music's pretty cool, right? I just finished that this morning. When it comes to the light pillar, It's got this health refresh thing and an invincible duration. Oh, the invincible duration is only 0.2. Oh, it's because I don't have the glove. That's right. What I promised on day 420? <laughs> uh, I don't remember. But I did, I did smoke a bowl before I started today's stream. Like, you know what? I'm gonna get in the spirit of day 420. <laughs> I, I had some plans. I was gonna try and I was gonna do a playthrough, but I really want to get this a few things done before this playthrough. One of them is the flask quest because the flask item is pretty cool. So I might do like a, a playthrough stream on Monday or something after this release is out. Because there's a lot of new stuff I want to get in here. So, anyways, it'll just be code and high day. So I need to create a quest, basically, that you you would um, get an empty flask. You get an empty flask from Brutus, and then you have to go fill the flask up and bring it back to him, and he drinks it. He's like, yeah, thank you. Um, and, but he, keep, he gives you the back the empty flask, so you can go refill it and have this really powerful item that refills all your health. Which you kind of need for this boss here. I don't know if you guys have seen his boss, but this boss is pretty awesome. So this, you have to basically have, oh shoot, I can't beat this guy without the glove. Actually, let me check, let me check. I don't think I have the glove. Yeah, okay, no glove. The glove is the gate item. What the hell is this, poison armor? Oh, that's not in the game yet. Um, yeah, okay, let's try this without the glove. I'm not sure if this is possible. Alright, pizza, see you, man. Whoops.
flask is not full, damn it. <laughs> Can't beat this guy. Ah, uh, you need like you need like a definite strategy to beat this guy. It's a lot easier. Wait a minute. Set that to four. And we have the glove. And we're back at the entrance. I just want to see if they can. Oh yeah, totally. <laughs> Rip the shit out of that. It's so great. I love the glove item. It's so cool. What's up, T? How's it going? All right. So let's get to this flask quest. I can't wait for this item to be obtainable. We need to go back to the overworld. We need to create a story item. Happy day 420, everybody. World, indies, foes. God, this is such a long process every time. <laughs> Get this reestablished. Every time I reboot my computer or even close Xcode, I have to reset up this the the way my windows are. One hundred sixty lines long. That is a long change log. for one version, totally. Okay, so it's an, gonna be an encounter with Brutus, which means we're gonna have another Brutus story and entity. All right, so this is Brutus. One, this is gonna be Brutus two. We're always on Z zero. If you have the sword, What's the what's the pre requirement for this one? Dang. Item one bombs. Bomb container. Yeah, 
Yeah. Good comments. I'm pretty bad at them too. Sometimes I just put the just one character. I'm like ah, or sometimes I just go like as is. Don't even put anything. I can I can prove that. I can back this up. Here's one that's just dot. There's a couple more dots. Here's a slash. That's totally different than a dot. <clears throat> Bomb container. What item should. Oh, life container. Yeah, the most compact one liner. Ah, it's good to be lazy sometimes, right? Who's going to read them, anyways? As long as you get the drift, right? If you're the only one working on your project and you get the drift of the comment, even if it's just a dot, that's all you need, right? It's just like, you know, a little hint to what this commit's about. But if you're working in a team, I can understand how putting some somewhat meaningful lines in there. The deception though, the self-deception of it all is that I think I think I'm supposed to put like good descriptions in my own git logs that are like perfectly what well, you know like punctuated and stuff like that <laughs> right uh. <clears throat> but yeah I think I'm lying to myself trying to like write full sentences on my git commits because nobody's ever gonna read these except for me so I don't need to finish it with a period. I don't need to start it with a capital letter. I don't need to put an apostrophe. All that kind of bullshit. It'll save me some time, you know? What item? What item is also required for this? Oh, wait, wait, it could have done Brutus 1, and if we have this and this. Yeah. Let's say he has more, you have to have more positions, so maybe 15? Okay, anyways. Spawn any Brutus. Dialogue Brutus 2. Item. Flask full 1. Okay, we need some story or some dialogue for this. Brutus. Brutus 2. Um, so basically he's going to give you the empty flask and say, go get me some spirits. Uh-huh, uh-uh, 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 uh-
This needs to engage at the right time of the game, this quest. Let's see if it even engages at all first. I'll find a place for it to engage. There he is. Hey, kid. Go give me some spirits. Problem was though that I shouldn't have the full flask already. Or even the empty one. Oh. also gives me the empty one. And I'm going to create a new action. Map. Map location, something like that. So it's it's gonna highlight a map location for like the store where you can buy spirits. Which will be store one. I think that'll do. Story system. Create this action. Where are those again? Oh, here we go. This will be action map location. Game scene set map. Oh, set boss pause actually. What the heck is going on? Auto complete. Auto complete. You're so slow today. Oh my god, what the hell is going on? So there's reset boss boss. That's not what we want, we just want set boss boss. Okay, so set boss boss is kind of going to be the same thing, basically. 
except that it skips parts. Wait, this might need to be invalidated there. Yeah. So we're setting the boss boss and the map shown boss boss. This function is just like, it's like, this should be called auto set boss boss or something. Basically, it just looks for where the, the green dot should be on your map automatically. Show the boss switch, show the boss goal, room. This is just where you want to ma manually set the boss pause and invalidating this will make it so it um, does the green animation so that should be good we got this new set boss pause function and action map location is just set boss pause to whatever location we want So we want to look for world get no find pause. No, no. Get me zero. I guess maze needs this function too. All right. Find entrance is kind of what, but there's, is there another function like that that finds it by a flag? I don't think there is. Set all flags, set flags. No, no, has flag, no, no is nearby. No. Nope. Okay, so we want to find find flags. You in 64 type flags. So it just finds an area by given Flags. So we're, the flags we're going to look for here are store and one. Wait a minute. No, no, no. This isn't right. This isn't right at all. No, I don't want this as on maze. I want it on world. So if it if a, an area is a dungeon or a maze, either one of those, you can find any area by flags. D3i hash type. I want to do. Is there no flags searching? Get pause with flag. There it is. Ah, I already had this function. That's a bad name for a function, get pause with flag. Okay, I'm fixing that. Find flag. Yay! I 
Okay, so I can use that in story system. What's up, Armin House? I'm programming a video game called Songbringer. What about yourself, man? You program? <sighs> takes a long time to compile when you get when you make a big change like that. Here we go, finally, parse flags. Val and the words we have are kit um no no words K okay, filters. Oh yeah, you just starting out. There's somebody else here that's 13 that also is learning to program, and uh, his name's Rocket Bunny, and he's making games already. He started with Game Maker, I think, and then now he's learning C and C plus plus. I'm proud of him. He's doing some cool stuff. This is area pause Z or whatever. Oh yeah, so Z zero. <clears throat> find find the parse flags val K filters of that. Oh, and then action map location. I was baited. <laughs> Sorry, man. No, this is the flask. It's a flask item for this video game. Yes. Yeah, I stand and I stand and work. Yeah. I started when I was I was fourteen when I started the program. Um, I was just a freshman in high school. And I started, I had this like computer class where um, my teacher kind of let us do whatever we wanted in our, in the computer class. It was great. We got to program video games. We got to like just play with computers for an hour. I was like, this is the coolest class ever. And um, it got me programming games in quick basic. And then finally I started learning C. Yeah, so. Okay, let's see if this quest works. Go get me some spirits, blah, blah, blah. Empty flask, sweet. We got the empty flask. Now, does it mark the right map location? Oh, it did mark a map location. Way the fuck up there, though. That's... that's I don't think that's where the map location is supposed to be. But we'll see what's there. Whoops. I accidentally went to the store. Okay, does it still have that map location? No, okay, so we need to use reset boss pause. Yeah, gotta keep coding, man. Keep coding for sure. Okay, I'll set a breakpoint here to figure out why that map location wasn't right. Ah! Oh, you didn't know where to start? Yeah. I guess I was kind of lucky then, I guess, because I had, I had a teacher that kind of knew where to start us. He was a great, he was a cool guy. His name was Shiraga. Jim Shiraga. I can't, I just remembered his name. 
Jim Shiraga, he was a really cool guy, great teacher. And he had this giant beard. He looked like, he had like a giant Gandalf beard. It was so big and awesome. And um, yeah, he, would, he had a really cool, interest, interesting teaching style because he let us kind of do whatever we wanted. And um, that really, it, I don't know, it really inspired my creativity to just be like, all right, I want to make a video game. Let's see if I can do that. And it worked. And he kind of like pointed us in the right direction, like go learn quick basic or go and learn vision, whatever. He, you know, he pointed us in the right language or right direction for languages and stuff. If you go to the inventory while the drones are swarming out, you get a green square on your screen. It'll not remove until you restart the game. Oh. I, th that's, I already have that bug listed as another one. I know I got it on here already. Map or something. Uh, I don't know. I'll set a card. Going to inventory while drones are swarming out and it leaves a green square forever. Okay, got it. Yeah, totally. It was, yeah, very experimental. He's like, yo, go, go try this. And we were like, oh, sweet. And he had, he had the knowledge and everything to be like, all right, this kid's, this kid's kind of got it. He, you know, cause I started learning quick basic, <laughs> you know, MS-DOS edit. We didn't even have Windows 95 at that point. We had no GUIs. It was just a, an MS-DOS command line. And we, you know, we would go MS edit and edit our like, um, our quick basic file and then play the, the crappiest slowest games you know like we we would spend all day during our class or whatever which is I guess an hour and a half we spent an hour and a half per per class working on our video game and we got to do that like two times a week or three times a week sometimes even and throughout the process he he was wise enough to be like all right this kid kind of understands quick basics, so he actually said, you should try C. You should learn C. And that's when I started learning C, and from then on, I was a game developer. Your teacher's boring? Oh, that sucks. Do you program with Arduino? No, I haven't, I haven't tried those. Have you? Are they fun? We got store one. Let's see what bits that returns. Zero. Oh, it's not filters, it's flags. Working on the flask quest. This guy gives you an empty flask. You got to go fill it up for him. But then you get an empty flask, which is a really powerful item because it refills all your health over time. Okay, let's see if these... Flags parsed that time. Oh wait, yeah, yeah. Got some flags. What bits are those? We should have two bits. All right, cool. We got one bit, two bits. Nice. That's probably right. 
Yeah, one is 32 up. Yeah, that's about 32 or so. Okay. Oh, trust me, it's not. It's not. It's not T. Once you see this new boss, you'll be like, oh my god, you need a flask to beat that guy because he's so freaking hard, has so much health. There's no other way to beat him. Um, I've tried because he's got that time limit because he's a giant wall that comes at you slowly and then faster and then faster and faster. You only have a certain amount of time to beat this boss with so much health. And it pummels the shit out of you. You get hit with the fear. You get hit with these little flying guys. And um, you lose so much health so fast, and then if you and then you ha kind of have to use bombs too, so your bombs are hurting you the whole time. So I tried using um, cactuses to do it, and cactuses don't quite do it because cactuses slow you down a bunch because you have to eat, you have to keep eating and eating and eating the cactuses, and eating a cactus takes a minute. You know, it, it's like really takes away from your time hitting the boss. So the only way I've found to beat this boss is to get the glove, and then. Um, and then use a flask halfway through. Oh, you're like, I, I'm already playing Jib anyways. Oh, oh, I got some new, I got some new things I'm going to make for Jib. Um, they're on my list. I, I don't know if I'm able to do it this, this version, but, um, Jib is going to have a little indicator for what, for places he can scan. So, Currently, like, you know, all you know is that there's a dead body for an enemy. And so it kind of, sometimes you, you can forget which enemies you've already scanned because there might be a room full of tons and tons of bodies everywhere. So I'm going to add a little, like, some kind of glow or some little subtle hint or whatever. So when uh, whenever there's a place that Jib can go scan, there will be some kind of animation or that something subtle there. So you know, you know the areas that you haven't scanned yet. I think that'll really help playing as him. <clears throat> All right, let's see what find flag returned. Position nine zero zero. I think that's right. Okay. Let's see if that actually all worked then. Yeah, so what I'm saying about flasks is, yeah, it sounds kind of OP that you can refill all your health, but um, given that, first of all, you only get, like, one flask, and you have to refill it, um, and then eventually you can get two more flasks. So you could possibly have up to three flasks, but they're rare items, they're hard to find, so that's what kind of balances out there, what seems to be OP about them. The shield is hard to use because of the small area. And because he has no sharp movement. Oh, you mean he, like he, like on, uh, when you're the human, you can sharply move left and right and stuff. Or do you mean the speed? Like how when he's an AI, he can kind of speed and go faster. I definitely want to make that better for sure. Playing as Jib is, uh, uh, I'm so glad to be getting your feedback about playing as Jib because I really want to make that part fun for, so this game is really kind of me, is going to be more of a two player adventure. All right, we got the empty flask. Let's see if it highlights the right location. Yes! And it highlighted it. Nice. Okay, so if we had, Huh, if we had... If we went downstairs here, we would lose the map location. Because we come up, we come like, oh. So if you're a player and you're kind of new to this, it might be kind of necessary to keep that. Right, so you're talking about Jib. So were you talking about Jib's, um, yeah, Jib can pick up diamonds, yeah. Cool, yeah, so I'll, what I'll do is I'll, I'll play again as Jib. Let me add this to my trailer list.
Jib um, can move more sharply. I think I know what you mean. He has this sort of acceleration. Yes, he's the diamond thief. But you collect, you go, you collect it. You actually, I mean, you share an inventory. Oh, and his velocity left when you move. Ah, uh, okay. That's right. He does have a little velocity after. Okay. Hmm. I guess I could give him an item called Flask Quest. And so once you have the Flask Quest, Oh, yeah, get a flask quest and then you get two of them. Oh, it's just the velocity part? Oh, okay. Okay, I'll feel that out. Because what I want here is for this um, reset boss pause function. There we go. Yeah, no worries, man. Yeah, I definitely want to make that. I would definitely want to make Jib just as awesome as possible. Um, there's a live event I'm going to this month. Actually, in about two weeks. Here in San Francisco, I'm going to be demoing Songbringer. Um, so I'll probably be sitting there playing as Jib a lot. You know, like I'm sure a lot of people are going to come up and I'm going to want to play as Jib or I don't know, maybe. Yeah, that might be just a really fun thing to like, like be there and kind of be the supporting player for a lot of people that day. I don't know. It'd be really interesting to play in a lot of different teams for sure and see how that goes with people. Cause I don't want to, I don't want to like tell people where to go or do what to do and stuff like that. I just kind of want to be there to have like people experience it from the two player perspective. And I want to experience it from the two player perspective a lot too, just to get as many thoughts as I can on how it's, how it could be more fun to play as Jib or play in a team. Hmm. So maybe if the boss status. No. Yeah, I think I need to freaking. I need to create an item called Flask Quest. 
but it feels kind of wrong to do that. But that's that really is how that data needs to be tracked, though. All right, doing it. So we'll have flask quest and a flask refill. Okay. Another major bug in the dungeon. Some doors close, you enter them, and you have to solve a task to open them again, right? Yeah. Well, Jib can never make it through those closed doors. Oh! Really? Yeah, I noticed that too. I know I fixed part of it for Jib's the doors closed on Jib or they locked on Jib in some rooms, but I didn't fix it all. Yeah, that's pretty important too. So Hmm. Jib can't make it through locking puzzle doors. So the flask quest is depletable, meaning you start to two, once you use it and you've solved that quest, it's a one. And then in, when you don't even have it, it's a zero. So, and we have a refill item, flask refill. It's a very temporary item. What's the thing that makes it so it doesn't count? Skill, alien, equipable, depleted, depletable, stockable. Counts for percentage. I guess it should be K none. Okay, so the quest to earn your flask is K none. No flags. Okay, so in order for Brutus 2 to even appear, you can't have the flask quest. And we need to give the player the flask quest.
You found a bug? Oh. Let me get you the ability to go through these doors. Yeah, I'll, I'll fix that. I'll fix that. Oh, strength activation. Oh, man. Oh, dang. That's that's a crazy one. What's up, Scissor? Welcome, welcome, welcome. So the flask quest has, like, you don't even see it. It's not even a visual item or whatever. Okay, this could work. Yeah, so it gives you the flask quest. You have to go to the store. If at the store you're allowed to purchase the flask, or wait, you purchase a refill. You're allowed to purchase a refill, and that refill you basically, technically, you carry it to. Or no, you can. Then you'll have one of the flask quest item, and when you go back to Brutus the third time. So we need Brutus to like to be or whatever. You have the flask quest. What's up, Pedro? How'd it go, man? How'd your interview day go? Load, upload, delete. <laughs> Whoa, it works though. Okay, let's see if this crazy scheme starts to work. <laughs> You already have a job offer from the third interview? Nice, man. Mm. Nice, you got an offer. Congratulations. Flask. Hey, thanks, crazy guy. 
USA first gold medal, sweet. Shooting category. Okay, hopefully this time... Oh, we should have a... Hold on. I should at least have an icon too. So, we'll do item flask. So it'll be a full flask icon, but you never see it. It's never in your inventory. Until you save, of course. But I mean, it's never visible in your inventory. It's just a hidden item. Whoops, he just gave me the empty flask. Oh, because I already had the quest or what? Yeah, I know. Hmm, okay. See what happens. Wait, wait, I gotta make sure I don't have the item. Flask. Okay, I don't have either of the flasks, none of the flasks. Oh, wait, I don't have that yet. So why did it allow this one to run? Has Flask Quest? Huh. Guess I gotta turn on story mode here, or story debugging. Okay, he did the right he did the right one that time. Go give me some spirits. Spirits quest. Fetch Brutus some spirits from the store. I guess that should show in your inventory. Let's make it show in the inventory, but not be. Oh. Well, I, uh, I guess this could count for 100%. If you're going to do a 100% run, you got to do this. He charmed the birds, did he? Were they just moving or not moving? I guess this is going to have to be passive. And if it's going to be passive, it might as well be depletable. Okay, can live with it this way. Basically, this will make the quest a little more clear for people. They'll see something in their inventory and be like, oh, I gotta, I gotta go do something about this. And the story system, when he gives it to you, where's action item, here we go. Constance, get item max. Oh yeah, totally. It's gonna it's gonna give you the full amount of that item. Awesome. It's gonna be so cool to have this item in the game. 
and it'll make it really cool for people that like, you know, it'll be nice insurance for people because it's really easy to die in this game and it kind of sucks that there's no way to refill your health at the beginning of a, of a level or whatever. So a, pe a person can have a flask as a backup, like for those kind of situations, it's like a mulligan. You're like, oh shit, I just died. I'm all the way down to three hearts. Do I use my, my flask now or do I save it for the boss? You know? Um, yeah, so you'll keep the item after you do the quest, but it won't show up in your inventory after you do the quest. So, so you'll get this item, it'll be in your inventory, Spirit's Quest. Alright, and then you go, you fulfill the quest, and and your your amount of that item will go from 2 down to 1, which will indicate that the quest is complete, but, but yet you still have that item, you know, so it kind of marks it as complete. Basically, it's just a way of marking an item is, item is completed or emptied or whatever, but still having a value attached to it or attached to it. So it just goes two one zero. Flask quest. Flask refill. <laughs> That'd be a good way to do it. It's not going to be a revive anymore, though. It's a. It's just refills your health. So it's a purposeful thing. It's not automatic. It used to be. An, I was like, ah, I'll make it like the the bottles from Zelda. But I don't. I don't. I decided not to do it that. You know, I'm going to do it a different way, where you drink it and it refills your health over time, over like a few seconds, like a Popeye X episode. This, yeah, the spinach. Like it always happened, right? The spinach always lands in his mouth. Fun to remember rooms where you can refill your health because the mobs there have some. Oh, okay. Good point. Very good point. But, Teak, that will still be a useful thing for you to have that knowledge because there'll be times when you'll want to you'll want to save that flask for the boss. Like the boss will be hard enough that you will kind of need to refill your health at some point during the boss fight. And there's really no other way to do that now than having a, a flask. So you're gonna still benefit from those rooms where you know where to go to get some mobs of enemies and refill your health. Cause you'll need to save your flask. Plus if you're speed running, oh, it's just lowered, oh. Well, I can always make it so, um, I can always make it so you don't get the flask until later in the game. I don't know. Crazy guy, how do you join the alpha team? The uh, there's the alpha's already over, but the beta team, you can be a part of the the closed beta by pre-ordering. Uh, looks like uh, Bafu not might not be here today. Um, so it's just songbringer.com slash pre-order. And if you pre-order the game at $16, you get the game when it comes out. And if you pre-order at $32, you get to be part of the closed beta and play the game right now. So, there you go. Okay, so we've got the flask quest item. So now we can make refit or reset boss pause smarter. Buffo's kill. What's up, Dangrit? Yes, yeah, I do the art, I do the music, I do the code. Um, but I'm not just a one-man band. There's people here on the stream that have helped out uh, by translating the game into several different languages. There's like German and all that. So thank you, everybody. And there's been tons of backing. I wouldn't. This game would not be possible without the backers that back the Kickstarter. Thank you again. All right, so if you have the flask. All right, so basically we're gonna have to change the, well, first I'll do this part. We don't need said boss pause anymore. So 
So we'll get rid of that. Um, and we go um, show the store location if we have the flask quest. Okay, so if we have the flask quest count, go here to gear dot count. Okay, item flask quest is two, meaning you have the the quest is active. And we are at Z0. Then we're going to use the position we got from the map location. Action map location is this fine flag. We're going to change the way the map location action works for the story system. So before we had map location store one, that's now it's just map location. No TDD. What's uh, what's TTD or TDD? So we'll just go, now it's just going to be reset boss boss. And this boss boss equals world find flag zero. K flag store, K flag one. And return. All right. Test driven development? What's that mean? I don't even know what that means. Test driven development? You mean like testing stuff? I test stuff constantly, all day long. Too much. I hate testing stuff. I test it so much. Okay, you just give me the empty flask because. want that to be if the flask quest is complete. What's test driven development? Involves writing code to test the functionality of your code you want to write, like unit tests, before you actually write it, and then you write, oh, before you actually write it? And then you write your implementations to fit the tests? Oh, hell no. I would definitely not do that. Software process that relies on the repetition of very short development cycle. Requirements are turned into very specific test cases, and the software is improved to pass the new tests only. Yeah, that doesn't really that doesn't really make sense for game development, really. I don't know. Maybe for some games. Right, like writing your code to fit a unit test or whatever. That's that doesn't make any sense. Okay, this well, I um Flask quest is
Uh, you know what I should do? I should, I should be like, has flask quest equals one, like a little special. Yeah. Right, how do you write a test for this game is fun? Or how do you write a test for this art looks good? Or this animation fits this sequence? Or is this music, this mood? I think I can do that with um, has. So we're gonna be in the story system and looking at has and how it parses has. Parse has, here it is. So, has or. Damn it, I'm using this thing called push either. If do a, a push, okay, that's just if do a. Wait, what? <laughs> this macro, come on. What's up, Pete Wally? In an enterprise environment? Yeah, definitely, with several developers, totally. Yeah. A B do a element. A B negate element. So I'd have to push back some kind of quantity into here too. That would just totally mess up this whole system. Hmm. Has is just a vector of item types, not quantities. Oh yeah, I'm working on the flask quest. So you get this, you get a flask for fulfilling this little fetch quest. It's kind of kind of silly, right? Fetch quest, but maybe I can improve that later. But I think this, I think this is the right way to do it for now. I guess I could go to where it's using has. Can run. And then where it searches, searches through has count node dot has. As long as you get to explore doing it. All right. Ah. 
the trick I'm at, the, the trick I'm trying to solve or whatever I'm trying to do right now is to basically make I just want to have one item called the flask quest with a quantity two indicating that you've got the quest to do a quantity one indicating that you've completed the quest. No, no, it's not. Um, I'm trying to think up a simple way to solve this, but it's, nothing's coming to me right now. Huh, I guess, okay, I guess I'm just going to comment this one out for a moment. I'll comment out half of the quest. So, we'll just have the first half of the quest where you're getting the quest and you fulfill the quest and all that. And then I'll figure out how to get this last part in here where you, at the end of your quest, you get the, the empty flask and you're good to go. Alright, alright, we'll do it this way. Been drinking? Nice. Right on. This code generates code in another language, it generates code in another language. What, really? Holy crap, a hundred languages? That's crazy, I'm gonna open this in a browser. Check that out later on. Dang, that's crazy cool. Alright, so we're gonna go here to the first store. Save it here. Pig Latin? <laughs> Alright, so this first door has to have a flask refill. Okay, so we're going to replace cactus container. Got an extra cactus container now. Throw that in the secret items. Got so many secret items now. I gotta start throwing some of these secret items in the dungeons. And at some point shows the player its entire source. Yeah, Pete and Wally, I could do that. Totally. I, could, I thought about that. I could add a second item for this, but then it could throw the percentage off. Um, I know I could, I could just go change the way it calculates the percentage for your, per, you know, how many percent items you finished. Like if you got 100% items or 
15% items or whatever. Yeah, I can always just fix that by doing some kind of flag, like doesn't count or something. This is K item flask refill. This will be in the first store. Instead of bomb container 10, this bomb container 10 will be purchasable at the third store along with a, a juicy element, another element in the second store, a jib shield in the second store, a compass in almost every one of these. Yeah, a compass in every single store of the first three stores because compasses are freaking awesome when you're first exploring the world. You're like, oh my god, where's the next dungeon? Right, yeah, yeah, totally. You just change the percentage, yeah. Like a super item, it's a way of thinking of it, yeah. Okay, so we should have the flask refill as an item in this store, but we need to now do the text and stuff for the flask refill. So once again, this is item flask. This one you just have one of. This one's K none. And it costs. Twenty. Okay, so you have to buy it from this store. And then when you get it, it's about a 1D game? Cool. No way. One dimensional game. There's already, isn't there already a 1D game out there? Or oh, there's lots of 1D games. Never mind. Oh, I guess, yeah, there are a lot of 1D games. Okay. I was thinking of zero D where everything everything in the entire game is just one dot. <laughs> How could you even play that? Yeah, it does. Yeah, you define it. <laughs> like Final Fantasy thirteen. <laughs> I haven't even I haven't played Final Fantasy since ten or nine was it? I don't know, ten maybe. So now we need when we pick up the item pick up item. Pick up item. No fighting in the store. All right, here we go. Else. Is it item not type? Yeah. Okay, item flask refill. Or fulfill the quest. So if you have. Oh yeah, and top all topology terms. Renders it a resolution of one by ten eighty.
All right, and if we have a quest, or if we don't have a if the quest is already fulfilled, or we don't have it, then we can refill the flask. So we might as well make a get empty flask function. I gotta get full flask. Might as well have its complement. Get empty flask. <sighs> Lots of little components to this whole quest thing, but this will be nice. This'll be, it's the first quest actually you'll have in the game. Flask empty. World number of flasks. Item plus one. If you have that one, return it. Otherwise, none. Good. Empty flask. Got it. Okay, so now we can go. Need a gear to get empty flask. D flasks not equal to K item none. Then we can refill it. How are you controlling the gear component with text? It, everything gets parsed. And uh, I have constants.cpp, which has the corresponding integer for every one of the. Um, Every word in the game, it's all in constants.cpp. So it just all parses. So now we need to use the, uh, the exact opposite of this other gear function. I just recompiled all that and I kind of need to redo it again because I should have added refill flask. Yeah, refill flask. All right, recompile again. But they can also they can be based on the exact same code though. That's cool. Are the individual items in an array or another structure? They're in a map. Yeah, so they map they map from the integer type to the word or the word to the integer type depends.
Okay, we got use flask. So if constant is empty flask item, then item is going to be something is empty equals that is full is empty or is full this is is empty then we want to set the corresponding full and if it's full want to add the corresponding empty flask Okay, that looks good. And then use flask. Toggle? What? So we'll just pass in an item type to use flask now. Don't need this function anymore. Don't need gear. There. No code duplication. Now, all the way back to here when we refill a flask. E dot gear dot use flask empty flask. The other place we're using use flask, we want to do get full flask.
All right, so this is what the this is all meant to do is you're you're meant to purchase the refill flask item, um, and then that refills your empty flask and or fulfills the quest. Let's see what happens. We need some text for it, of course. But let's see if it works. So if you have the flask quest, yes, it's going to set it to one. Say something like, oh, you. I guess the simplest thing is to have two items for this. And both of them don't count. All right, let's do it that way. So we just need a string for the item flask refill. Old code. Yeah. Not possible, lol. <laughs> Zelda mods, eh? Oh, because I already have the item? Yeah, Mr. Robot? Mr. Robot is awesome. That's a rad show. I liked it. I liked it a lot. I haven't seen season two yet, though. Where's that little bit that purchases an item? Well, that's right up here. Purchase item, duh.
Okay, so we need to add a clause here to when you're purchasing an item, if the item type you're purchasing is, okay, item flask refill, and there's going to be either this or that. Um, you either need to have You need to have the flask quest, or you need to have an empty flask in order to purchase. Oh man, that sucks, dang. I think I got this logic wrong. So it's flask refill. If not, Oh, I'm not. Okay. It's hard. It's hard to code when you're kind of high. What's up, Guigo Lima? When did I start programming? 22 years ago. <clears throat> okay, let's see if that worked. I want to purchase it, but only purchase it once. It is. I should just be making art today. <laughs> right? Hi, oh no, just purely life. It's totally life. You know, this isn't day 420 making this game at all. I promise. I do not have a relationship with Putin. Okay, I ha I have a relationship with Putin. <laughs> I know I should switch to art, right? But I, I really want to get this quest done. I want you to be able to get this new item. It worked. Okay, that time it worked. And you have the flask quest, so it gives you the flask quest. Okay, and this time it's trying to purchase it again. Item type is gonna be refill. Oh, it's crazy illegal, yeah. Just in general for no reason at all. So, do we have the flask quest? That's gonna be one, so no, if not this, or count empty flasks. So we should not be able, this should return zero. Yeah, and so we should not get in here and it should do the meh sound. All right. Yes, okay, so we can purchase it once. And then never again, don't, don't set the break point there. Cool. Okay, and but if I come back in, you've been doing a quest to drink as many old fashions as you can. <laughs> nice. 
Okay, yeah, cool. Now it's like, no, mm. you can't buy that because I don't have mm. an empty flask or the flask quest. Okay, so now we are, we're, dude, halfway done. Almost halfway done with this whole questy thing. So now that I have this item, I should be able to go find Brutus again. Where's he at? Oh, he's not going to appear yet because I haven't, I haven't finished the quest yet. Okay, okay, there's one last thing to do here, and that's to make the quest items work. So we need a, one quest item for if you've got the quest, and one quest item for if you've got the quest completed. To eat four rolls of sushi. <laughs> Why'd you fail? How can you fail? So we got flask quest and then flask quest complete. Oh my god, this is so why? Why do I have to do it this way? Well, flask quest complete can have no flags. All right. Oh, there's only room for so much sushi? You live in Canada? Uh, right. What are you doing next week? 3.9 sushi rolls. <laughs> Tempura is good, right? They are filling. Those little filling things. Okay, we got Flask Quest and Flask Quest complete. This is never meant to ever be seen. You can only have one of them. And it has no flags, so it won't count on your map or your end game percentage. But it's just a simple way to trigger in the story system this Brutus 2B thing. So we need to have Flask Quest complete. in order to get this and get your first flask. Things with friends. <laughs> nice. You don't suppose this code could be more dry? Well, I mean, if I got a towel out and really just toweled it all down, maybe some paper towels would make it more dry. So yeah, some really good scratchy paper towels would be nice. So we got dialogue 2B. Okay, well now we just need to get the flask quest complete when you purchase the refill. So we got flask quest is one and flask quest complete is one. Okay, so, second half of the quest. We go, we get the spirits. We got the spirits. In my inventory, I have no more flask. Gotta find Brutus again. Yes, there he is. Oh, he just gave me the empty flask without talking. But that's okay. Okay, so let me save where I'm at. 
Let's see what items I have because that's oh and also we need story B. Oh, because I called it Brutus 2 again. Alright, now uh flask. Nice flask quest completes one. Good. And Flask Quest is also one. Flask Refill you can never possess. And now I have an empty flask. Cool. Now I should go, let's check out refilling it. Okay, so I have an empty flask in my inventory. And I go purchase some spirits. And I have a full flask. Oh, does this sit there like playing that sound over and over? Oh, it does. That's fine. You're standing on the switch the whole time. Okay, sweet. The last. Okay, the only thing I. That could have been better there is if it auto equipped the flask. So, um. We just do that here. When we refill a flask. E.gear.equip. E gear dot get full flask. And that means that the in constants, the full flasks need to have a default button. I think that's just adding on a last parameter. Yeah, you just put K button A or whatever. Okay. So this needs to be, I think of the defaults it should be uh K button Y. That's where I usually put the cactus. So that's default. You can always change your default. Yay for information for the particles. You found a new particle. Yeah, they're part of your army. It's cool. I can't wait to play Sub Swarmonian Explorer. Nice, it all equipped it. Sweet. So now we have a flask. So let's say, let's say I get my ass kicked in a dungeon or whatever. <clears throat> I'm down to half a tooth worth of, worth of health. You can drink a flask and it refills your courage. But the cost is that you, you can't use it again. You now have an empty flask. So if you're deep in the game, if you're in a dungeon or whatever, you really only get one use on it until you come back to the store and refill it. So it's kind of, it's kind of one of those things where it's a powerful item, but it's mitigated by the fact that you have to refill it. You're gonna put the alpha? Sweet. I can't wait to try it, man. Okay, the quest is now complete. Let's try it again from the start. So I should have no empty flasks, no full flask, no flask quest, no flask quest complete. And in, oh yeah, and also I should make it so 
there there needs to be some kind of doesn't count function or something. Oh, weeks, yeah. Nice. Cool. Make a couple maps, new trailer. One last compilation of constants. I promise this is the last compile. Last time. I promise. Counts for percentage. Oh, nice. You got good free time? Sweet. Alien. Okay, so this is going to be K. Um, doesn't count. Oh, sweet. You're going to start restart your green light? Nice. Cool, man. Let me know. Let me know. I'll vote for it. So the flask quest has K doesn't count. And the flask quest complete just has doesn't count. Just to make it explicit that this does not count towards your item percentage for the whole game. You don't have to have gotten the flask quest. You could have just got the flask somehow and still get 100%. And this will be good because in the future I can use this doesn't count for many things. Whatever needs it. Ah, so everything now, this is really, st all the stockable flags, I should also add, doesn't count to the stockable flags, because this is way more explicit and clear. Okay, stockable, okay, doesn't count, doesn't count, doesn't count. Cactuses don't count what your cactus containers do. Bombs don't count, but your bomb containers do. And that's it. Okay, so now we got a more explicit flag for how how you measure what counts for your for the end game. And with that, I think I'm ready to try out this quest. Again, we've got everything set to zero. Okay, so this happens when you first encounter, you encounter Brutus for the second time. The first time he gives you the bio detector, and then this second time you encounter him, you get um, the flask quest. So depending on how powerful this item really is, I may put this later in the game or earlier in the game. Or maybe in permadeath mode or something like that, you can't get this item, something like that. It might make the. Oh wait, I need to can't. I need to also get rid of the story item for Brutus two and two B. I know the birds do need to scatter better. That's a little tiny touch though. I'll get to that at some point after I finish the more bigger, more important touches. 
like this flask item. There we go, Brutus. Thanks, oink, what? Why well, here you go, thanks, oink, already. You have to have flask quest complete in order for that to trigger. I'm pretty sure it doesn't. Yeah, it... what? Uh, those birds don't lead you anywhere yet. But there is going to be plans for some birds to show you to reveal certain secrets. Stuff like that. Just little hints where secrets are in the game. So if you really, really know the game and you're really paying attention, you can find a lot of stuff. Okay, that's a total mystery. I don't know why it triggered that. That story element, Bruce 2B. Did I type Fly's Quest complete correctly? Had to have to get the other one to work. Okay, I can think of a couple ways to fix this, but I'm kind of worried why this is even broken in the first place. And does this happen every time? Did that time. Okay, got to start debugging this story system to figure out why. So if can run... Debug in the story system. It's so easy. Anybody could do it. Debugging is the easiest thing ever. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, well, this, is, this quest is almost complete. It basically works, there's just this one little snafu here with this stomping of items on top of each other. Bruce 2, here we go. Why does it allow this? What node is this? This is node Brutus 2. All right, so Brutus 2 should be just allowed. Let's just see if it does allow it. Wait, and what items does it have? Status 2, you have to have the sword and the compass. Oh wait, what? Right? It's the easiest thing ever. It's something you ran into in re-implementing texture loading from disk, yeah? What's that? Hasn't flight an item class quest. Okay.
Wait, we just it just didn't allow it. That's weird. Half an hour trying to figure out OpenGL knows how big the image is. I'm trying to st stuff like testing. <laughs> Oh man, I hate those kind of moments where you're like racking your brain. So we have the first two items. Doesn't care about Hazor. Image loader gives you back the image dimensions, the number of bytes per pixel. Oh, oh, yeah. Uh, I hate those. I hate those times when you're. It's like the bug you're looking for happens to be in a system that's in a higher level than you expected, or something like that. Where those ones always get me. Where it's like I spend hours trying to debug things a certain way, and then I finally realize, oh my god, it's not even in this system. It's in some higher level. That happens a lot. I always get like, I'm like, oh, this has got to be this. I got to try that. And I try all these debugging techniques. I'm like, oh, this technique can get it. I can, let me just log out all these, these uh, values here. Or let me set a breakpoint here and step through the code. Nothing works. And you finally realize, oh my God, I'm debugging the wrong code. <laughs> Those get me so bad. I'm like, I feel embarrassed after that. So what are we looking for? Vector, last quest, yeah. What do you return? Zero. Oh yeah, that's fine. Return true. Okay, this one's possible. It happens to everyone. Yeah, I know. Right? It happens to us all. It's good to share these little stories, though. Just so you, you know, we all, <laughs> we're all honest about how the fact that, like, code gets us sometimes. It gets my goat. My goat has been gotten. I have no more goat. Type I know, right? Why did they do that? Sometimes it sometimes a vector does that, sometimes it doesn't. I don't get it. So yeah, Brutus 2, that returns a yes. Let's go to Brutus 2B. Check this out. You should not you should not allow this. Okay, so because 2B um, the flags. Yeah, it's supposed to have sword. Compass zero and flask quest complete. I know standard big standard big standard, yeah. We once had a forum thread. We not figure out to negate an int. Oh my god. What? That's crazy. Oh, I just stepped over the one I was supposed to check. Damn it. Gotta run this again. I was supposed to check this line. Count node.has is less than node.has.size. See, we should not have counted flask quest complete. That value should have come back as two. What? What? We're almost there. Almost got this thing debugged. Okay, so next we know that one works. 2B, here we go. Come on. Don't step over the line. Don't step over the line. Stay. Ah! I almost stepped over it again. Uh, 
Okay, so it's going to count up those three items, hopefully. So it's counting sword. Rhett's three already? Oh! Oh, oh, okay, I see what's going wrong here. Calculated an approximation after running for two hours in a render farm? What? That's crazy. Just to negate an int? So, my blunder here is that I'm counting up instead of ha instead of checking has Which means I need to know all the places that are already using that code because node.has, node.has or, node.has int. I think those are the only, okay, I just gotta do this. I gotta go to gear component, change the header and compile everything again. Just so I can see anywhere that it would break without this function so I can make sure that I use I make sure you know, make sure this works for all those instances because I really got to fix the way this function works hopefully it's all just right there in that one function so I could count it if it has a quantity greater than zero not necessarily the, qu the quantity of that item because you have th quantity three of the sword even though I don't even know why <laughs> I wasn't gonna make it so you could craft the sword with stuff and I still may do that so that would be like you get you get quantity three of the sword at first and then once you craft it you're down to like two maybe you craft it again Right, it's just those three. Okay, good, all right. That's not as bad as I thought. I can just change the function to work for these three instances. Okay, that's gonna be a pretty dang important bug fix later on, I'm sure. I'm sure down the road I'll be like, oh my god, I'm glad that works as expected now. This is really just counting the, the you give it a vector of items you want, like I wanna check the sword, I wanna check uh, the compass, and I wanna check the flask quest. And it returns one if it, you have that one, not necessarily how many of that one you have. If you wanna count how many of, Something that it has, you just use the count function. Really, I guess I should rename this to count has. Yeah, this is a good catch. I'm glad I took the, took the time to debug this. Even though it took 10 minutes. Oh my god, 10 whole minutes or so. All right, let's make sure it works now.
So brute is two. This function, if I just return, to return true. Good. Um, and then brute is two b. Let's check out this has call one more time. We're gonna count no dot has. We go loop, loop over this vector. First is the sword. Rent plus equals one. Good. That means we have the sword. Next is the compass zero. Do we have it? Yes, it's two. Next, do we have the quest complete? No, it's still two. Excellent. And then that's going to return. That's less than that. Has that size. So this is going to return false. Beautiful. Cool. The bug is fixed. Now, this data item. Yeah, totally worth it, right? So worth it. This will pay off in the long run. That's for sure. So this quit this little line of script or whatever is working now. Basically it checks to see if you have the sword and the item one and the flask quest complete before this Brutus 2B can ever trigger. So let's try this quest out again. Starting from the beginning. None of the items. We just go make sure this whole quest works. And if it does Great. If not, I'll fix whatever's left, and that will be it for today's stream. Well, let's see what happens when we first go in here. So we have the spirits, but we can't purchase them. Hey kid, go get me some spirits. Obviously, I'm gonna go rewrite this text later on and be like, you know, write some cool stuff. Oh, I'm gonna try and make a. I'm gonna try and find a way to word a fetch quest that sounds cool and not very fetchy. Which this already sounds pretty fetchy. Go get me some spirits. No explanation. Marketplace on your map. Okay, whatever. If you're not really reading it. You care then that, that's okay but I do want to make it cool for people that are reading. Spirits quest, fetch Brutus some spirits from the store. <laughs> Obviously I can take out the word fetch from that or change that to something else. Mm -hmm. Okay, any mark to place on my map. I have this quest item. Spirits quest. Mm -hmm. is gone. Yeah, so he's still in the same place over there. Just make sure he doesn't he can't engage. Good, he can't engage if he's if you're not close enough. We'll go over here. We should engage now. This might be because I, I didn't close the game out when I got this. How many hours have I logged building this game? That's a good question. Well, okay, there's still a bug. I'm not sure if I have the energy left to fix this bug right now, so I, think I might have to get some dinner. But that's a curious. You're making me curious. What? How many hours have I actually worked on Songbringer? Let's think. Um, well, I started working on it at the end of November. So let's say December 1st, 2014, which means 
Yeah, he calls you a wanker if you hit him. He's he's British. He's he's a British dude, hunter. He's a British hunter dude. Um, okay, so that's December, and then all of 2015, and then all the months of this year, which are January, February, March, April, May, June, July, just July, and then that one month in 2014, so that's eight, eight months, but that's 20 months I've worked on this game, times seven days a week, well, you know, minus a few vacations, let's say it averages to six, six days a week. Which it, which it probably does about average to six days a week. So 20 months times, wait, what's six days a week? If an average month is like 30 days. How many weeks? Oh, 4.3 weeks is the average, right? 4.3 weeks times 20 months times Six days a week. You need to port seed time to OSX. Oh, it logs how much time you you compile and link. Wow, that'd be a cool thing to have. So five hundred sixteen days I've worked on this game. Uh, that's that's probably right because like four hundred twenty days is what I've marked on my streams or in in YouTube or whatever, and I was never doing weekends in that. So even though I was working on the game, so that's five hundred sixteen days of work times eight to ten hours. Let's say it's nine hours a day I work on average. Then I've worked four thousand six hundred and forty four hours so far. It's a lot of work. But it's paying off, you know. You can tell. You can tell this game is is four thousand hours in, into being completed. Okay, so um, I'm gonna fix this bug later. I'm gonna get some dinner now, and um, I'll come back to this. It's just this is a little thing. I'm not sure exactly. I'm gonna take a screenshot of this because that might help me in to look at these actions right up here. Spawn any Brutus near Brutus. See why is it not? It's not like. Oh, I think it, I think what happened is that it had already spawned a Brutus there, and so Brutus couldn't spawn again, and he's supposed to be spawning or something. I don't know. You get to work full days on this? Yes, I work full days by full time thing. So yeah, cheers everybody. Have a great night. Have a great. Thanks for watching. Um, I know a lot of you are kind of uh, new to the. I saw a lot of new faces here today, so welcome to this whole Wizard Foo stream. I'm making this video game called Songbringer. It's a procedurally generated Zelda-like game, and um, the whole goal of it is to be kind of like Zelda 1, but procedurally generated, so every time you play it, you can play a different world or whatever, or play the same world again if you enter the same code. So that's kind of it. Um, you have like a sword, you have, you know, all these like this top hat you can throw. You have bombs. You have a lighter. You have you cactuses. Um, there's there's a lot to this game. So, um, anyways, it should be pretty fun once it's all said and done. So, cheers everybody. Have a good night.